Okay, hey everybody, I'm Steve Burns here, and, and thank you so much for being here for the Digital Creativity with Stephen Burns, and today is the LightWave um, 3D Roundtable Discussion. So, uh, it's informal, it's all impromptu, so you guys can come on. Now, if you want to come on and share something in LightWave, or it doesn't have to be just LightWave, it could be, it could be Photoshop in LightWave, or, or some other program, um, after Effects and Light Wave. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do. You can come and share your ideas, share your thoughts, share some a modeling that you're doing. Maybe you're creating a, a starship or or a or a tank in Light Wave. You want to kind of share share with the group what you're doing there. That would be wonderful. So what I'm going to do is, if you guys want to jump on and share, now this this link is only for people who want to actually talk and share. You have to have a, a microphone, right? To your, uh, the so you can you can talk and share with us here. Um, I'm going to put it into the chat box right now, and let's see, I'm going to put it right down here, there we go, alright, I'm going to hit the chat box now, alright, so, I put the link, oops, that's the wrong link, oh darn it, I hate it when I do that, I'm, I tell you, in the, give me a yeah. second, I'll put it into the chat box, <laughs> and it's going to be an Adobe Connect link, okay, alright, so if you want to join us in there, just come in, come in and join us directly into the, um, Adobe Connect screen. All right, so, um, well, we've got a couple people on today, uh, which is fantastic, actually. If you get two people, that is more than fantastic. And we have Michael Wolf and Kelly Cat on board. And why Hello. Can't, hello. Yeah, Let's hello. see. Like, why can't I see the rest of my, uh, uh, my screen here? Request control. That's what, that can't be it. That's really strange. Full screen. Get out of full screen. There we go. Thank you. All right. So Kelly Cat Myers is here, and Michael Wolf. I, I think the Lightwave community knows them well. Um, so I tell you what. I'm going to start recording. I think I did start recording. I just want to double check because if I, I hate it when I, when I think I started recording and I didn't. Yes, I, I did start recording. Excellent. All right. So. Um, I'm going to, um, we're going to start off with Michael Wolf here. Let's go ahead and, and maximize the screen. Now, if you see the screen not maximized every so often, everybody, um, it's because I want to see who's on the chat here, and I can only see it if I kind of minimize it. Once I know that everybody's cool, I'll go right back to the full screen mode um, right instantly. So we've got everybody jumping on board. Let's see who's coming. Liberty 3D, that's... Um, the cat. Let's see who else has jumped on board since we started. Oh, we got a bunch more that just jumped on board. Let me say, let me give a shout out to everybody here online before we get started. Uh, welcome, Three Adiv. Welcome, Elamont. Elamont, welcome. It's good to see you again. Welcome. Bative. What was that? Bative. That's Bative. Okay. So, <laughs> welcome, Artangelus. Um, welcome, Grandmaster Zach. Hey. Um, John Merchant, of course. Hey, man. How you doing, John? You really should come on here and show. You know what? I would really love it if you would come on here and share your your three D modeling stuff that you've been doing in Lightwave. It's fabulous. Um, I mean, just, just I mean, you don't, if you don't want to actually create anything, you don't have to. Just just kind of share what you've been doing. Um, Liberty three D, welcome. Like Wiki, welcome, and welcome, Lupus Lux. All right. So I'm going to put the link. Now, if you guys want to join on and actually share something. Um, give me about one minute, and I'm going to put the link down here. Just keep your eye on the chat box. All right, so then what I will do is I will shut up, and I'm going to let uh, Michael take it away. <laughs> Michael, it's all yours. <laughs> well, um, since I'm going to do a bigger presentation on all the products uh, uh, next month, uh, I just wanted to um, showcase what I've been working on recently, which hasn't been uh, released. Um, one of our um, plugins is Frame B. That's the one over here, and basically it's a manager for image uh, sequences in Lightwave. And the interesting thing is that unlike Lightwave itself, it actually caches them as well. So um, what I have here is a massive sequence uh, with images that are 136 uh, megabytes each, as you can see over here. They're 4K, 4.6K, and um, what uh, Frame D does is, as you scrub through the scene, it will actually um, cache them in memory, so that the second time you scrub through the scene, it's going to be a lot faster. 
and um, it's been doing that for quite some time. One of the recent additions is that I'm actually compressing those images in memory as well. And as you can see, even for images like this, um, there's still 31% of memory that's being saved just due to the uh, compression. And it's fairly fast, so uh, it doesn't really slow things down a lot, uh, especially not compared to actually reloading that whole image from a disk or network drive or even an SSD. And yeah, this is not super impressive here because it's too big to load either way. At this image size, you actually have the problem that Lightwave is just very slow in transferring the images, even if they are in memory. But what you can do is you can just decrease the size. And uh, what FrameD does is it allows you to choose a different image size uh, for your display than just for your render. So you can automatically work with like uh, proxy images while you're uh, in layout itself and when you're working interactively and then when it renders it automatically switches up back up to 100%. Does it do that automatically when you're working with the VPR? Um, it doesn't matter. As soon as like it loads the uh, part of the image sequence, it checks if there's a, a proxy uh -huh. image. And if it Very isn't, cool. it's being created automatically. Very cool. And yeah, as, as you can see here now, it's not 4K anymore, but 1.5K. And it's fairly big, uh, fairly fast to load as well. The, the, the cache for this actually exists already. And if I just play it now, you can see that the cache actually starts to, to fill up. I mean, I do have tons of memory here, so it doesn't really matter. And the compression is still... The like six gigs or machine. Yeah, <laughs> that's about 128. Oh, okay, you bastard. I'm, I'm, I'm just using half of it, just the cache, or half of the free memory. Right, okay. And yeah, so that that's basically the, the main thing that we're working on uh, recently is just to, to implement the compression, which is really useful. Totally. So, and just uh, fixing a few issues, stabilizing the whole thing. Um, there, there were some problems with refreshing within Lightwave when settings changed and having to automatically reload the sequence and things like that. Frame Frame D is uh, one of the plugins that I don't have up here. It's, it's um, something. Yeah, like yeah, it's uh, well. I mean, it, it's got two main uses. One would be something like this, where you have like one plate or multiple plates, and you would actually be able to play them back in a reasonable frame rate. Right. I've been Which dealing with um, uh, red footage lately, so you know, yeah. the yeah. shot of the exactly. Scarlet, it's uh, 4096 by 1708. So this yeah. will come in handy. I think this was, uh, no, this isn't that magic actually, it's like this test footage. And and what just and just and just a quick shout out. Sir, I, I apologize for interrupting. Um, just just a quick shout out to ADP who just logged in to Adobe Connect. Um, make sure your microphone is, is highlighted green. You can go to your drop list and go to your select your microphone and then click on the microphone to make sure it's green and that way we can hear your voice. And then when we, and when we're done with Cat and Michael, we'll we'll get to you. So just sit tight and be patient. Thanks. Sorry about that, guys. And uh, what it was initially designed for was actually um, to work with traditional 2D animation in a 3D environment, where you um, often have like you know loops of drawings, like a, like a walk cycle, and you map it onto a 3D geometry and then uh, put that into 3D space. So you have like a, a 2D animated character uh, that's actually a 3D space, and um, go back. So basically, like uh, loading uh, stuff onto cards. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, um, that that's where the, the editor comes in. And mm. what I've what I have done. Uh, this is right. So what we basically have here we have a sequence of, of uh, images. Mm -hmm. The mouth shapes. Cool. And we have an audio track loaded down here, which is not going to be played back. And the mouth shapes are actually mapped onto the face here. Right. Quickly render it. You'll see it. That's right there. 
So where is this being used? This, this looks like something that you, you built for somebody custom and then they turned um, it into a computer. Well, it, interestingly enough, um, I built the predecessor to this for a uh, short that I worked on in 99. Mm. <laughs> so, 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 so the, the, the whole concept of actually using single images and, and having like an external file to control when which image is going to be loaded uh, with the proxy loading and stuff like that, all of that was developed back then. Wow. And yeah, yeah. And a few years ago, I talked to some people from DreamWorks that are using um, Lightwave on some of the television work, like SpongeBob. Yeah. And that's also a combination of 2D and sometimes 3D. So for them, that would be really useful, or was really useful. So we kind of thought, okay, this would A, make sense as a product, and B, make sense for them. So, you know, let's kind of modernize the whole thing and right. uh, re rewrite it, but keep the initial idea there. Um, so what you can do here, for example, is um, you can sync the whole thing to layout. So as I scroll through layout, it yeah, takes a bit of that full 3D scene. As I scroll through layout, you will see that uh, the current time here changes as well. Sweet. This actually looks a lot like the X sheet from um, Taffa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is the whole the whole thing is you know obviously the X, X sheet based. Right. And yeah, so um, what I did is uh, basically for the next promo video where I'm going to highlight the, the compression, I will also um, basically have a small introduction animation which is going to feature, uh, feature Dogmar introducing himself as a legal figure animated with frame D. Cool. <laughs> Get Dagmar into the show. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, basically, that's her. And for those who don't know, Dagmar is my partner at TVW. And is it, this is something that, that Steph created and modeled from LightWiking. And I'm using that as a showcase to see how you can do uh, lip syncing with uh, 2D images within LightWave. Sweet. Um, very, very powerful tool for doing rotoscoping, um, like the old-fashioned uh, rotoscoping in the Disney sense, or the Ralph yeah. Bashkin sense. So if anybody don't know all about forks, they should look yeah. that up. Yeah, yeah, just coupled with the fact that uh, if you load the sequence, I mean, in, in, in this one, you have uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and you have what, there's 13 images in here. Mm -hmm. uh, what's being saved is, is uh, one text file and those 13 images. So you're not actually creating an image sequence which has like 250 images or something, but it's just a text file that determines when which image is going to be used. Right. So um, even if you change one of those images, you don't actually have to recreate a text file. Sweet. Whereas if, if you would be doing that kind of stuff, let's say in After Effects, and then exporting an image sequence and then importing that into Lightwave, the, the workflow would be much, much more complicated. Yeah, so it's a non-destructive way of going about it. It's non-destructive. And it's also, of course, coupled with the image cache that we have in, in frame D. So, you know, once one of the, once these the images are loaded, they basically, they don't really load instantaneously into Lightweight, but they're not being loaded from, from disk again. Sweet. Very sweet. And uh, if I were to go to the whole history of that thing, let me just check YouTube. I'll have to find that. I'm actually prepared to look for that. Uh, X sheets. Awesome. Let's see. That's a very old concept. That's a hundred years old. It's oh yeah, absolutely. That's it's the best really the best way to do it. So basically, what this whole thing was designed for initially, and this is '99, is this short called Ring of Fire which you can find on YouTube, just search for uh, Ring of Fire, maybe for, uh, Film Builder, I can probably put, put the link in, in the chat here, and in the Twitch chat. Uh, I would put it in the Twitch chat. Look at there. Stop posting links. And yeah, this, this was created using, using the predecessor to Frame D. So you basically have a ton of uh, um, 2D animated uh, cycles 
that have been placed into a 3D space in Lego, in Lego 3D. Cool. This one is super cool. awesome on, on a couple different uh, shows. Um, uh, Galactica, we used to uh, map um, uh, guys in their little flight suits and stuff on the mm -hmm. flight deck, and that would all be like pre keyed. And that's how we did all those people be walking in the background on the lower flight deck or um, in the background of uh, you know, distant shots. Um, of course, you know, um, having this for doing uh, explosions, playbacks on plates, anything like that would be kick ass. So, in case. The interesting thing is, uh, those, those cells were drawn on A3 paper, most of them, or A3 oh, yeah. uh, cells actually. Wow. In black and white, scanned in at 600 dpi, if I remember correctly. So, they're ultra high res. Yeah. There's a lot of zooms as well, the whole thing was produced in 2K on machines that have had half a gigabyte of memory. Yeah. And the only way to actually do that, because the, you couldn't composite it. There, there was no compositing application that had enough memory to load all these layers in a full resolution. So the only way to actually do that is to write something like frame D, work with proxies all the time, then take your scenes, split them up in layers, and render them back to front. Right. <laughs> Fun stuff. But yeah, uh, basically, lots, lots of the, the plugins that we develop um, kind of, you know, had a purpose in production first, and then we try to turn them into something that's more generic and it makes sense for more than just a single movie. And that's a lot of stuff. Um, that, that's a lot of our um, 3D application development comes from you know, the uh, um, you know, need for something in the production, and then poof, all of a sudden, you know, there it is. Um, mm -hmm. It becomes a feature a couple years down the road. You know, a lot of the worldly stuff comes out like that, or came out like that. Uh, no, your stuff's come out like that. Our, our stereo cam, uh, which was the predecessor to cam, came out like that. Um, uh, it's uh, good to see that kind of um, uh, materialize as product. So, 20 years in the making, basically. But Frame D's been out for some time. Like, when did you release the first version? It's going to be like seven years ago. Oh, about two or three years ago, I think. Two or three? It's been a while, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's been mm. longer than that. That, that was the last edition um, after Nodemeister, which released this year. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, this was basically 16,000 cells all scanned in by hand and uh, masked in Photoshop, semi-automatic tools, and yeah, good fun. <laughs> Two oh, years wow. in the making. Scary. Yeah, but the, but the only way to do it. And uh, I, I still think that the, the look is super unique. And it was it was good enough to be shown in the in the MoMA in New York, so um, that's something I'm really proud of. There you go. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah, that's that's like a wolf part of film history. Of what I've been doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Oh yeah, it's it's uh, NSFW, uh, but uh, it's art <laughs> officially. It's cool. And I'm really happy that it's uh, on YouTube, which is really cool. So 7,900 likes. Not bad. Yeah. yeah. 496,000 views. Oh, one of them is mine, so yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, yeah. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, Frame D and uh, what we've been up to recently. M more uh, next Frame D cost? Uh, Frame D is, uh, let me just check. Um, I rarely buy our plugins, so I don't really have. <laughs> <laughs> um, like uh, no, it's 160 nowadays. Oh, okay. Ouch. Yeah, upgrade to 2018. It's 160 euros. Oh, right. But uh, uh, for the power that's in here, this is actually you know quite kick ass. <laughs> well, the interesting thing is, there is I have no other 3D application that has that functionality. Well, that's another lightweight first. There's nothing close to that, uh, not not just uh, the editor, but even just uh, loading in sequences and caching them. There's no 3D application that does that. I mean, it, it, it does make sense to compositing, mm -hmm. they all, but nothing in 3D does that. That's cool. So stuff that in your hat, Maya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was a, a quick Very one. Cool. Right. I need to uh, go crack another drink here. I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Shall we turn?
Okay, so was that it for Michael? Yep, that's it. All right, so Michael, hang in there um, in case, uh, you know, people have some more questions and want to talk to you in per and want to, sure. you know, you want to chat in person or maybe something else um, may come up that you might like to show. Can you give me permission to post that link on Twitch? Absolutely, I can. So let's see, let's go to the permit pass. Um, let's see, it is permit and let's see what is your lupus lux there we go mm -hmm. okay there you go <laughs> so guys you got to have a permit to post so if you need a permit let me know light wiki you, you should know better so light wiki do you want me to uh oh, it's, uh, lux with an, with an x again oh the x at the end oh Okay, sorry, did I make a mistake? I, I thought I copied and pasted it from your thing. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. And any more of these, now I'll get kicked off the channel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like, I like, like Wiki's uh, comment, it must die. <laughs> there we go. All right, yes. so let's go permit. And uh, put in your name. Having a nice refreshing Fanta. Okay, there we go. So, um, Michael, would you stop sharing your screen, please, so that Cat can share yeah, his screen? Yeah. And stay oh. on. Don't go anywhere. Stay on board. So, am I sharing my screen now? Um, you can share your screen now, yes. Okay, sure. All right, neat. Uh, which monitor do I want? Well, see, this is the question of the day. Is it this one? Um... And Michael, you have, yeah. oh, there we go. and Michael, you have you you're, you're granted permission to post, so you only have so much time. It's sixty seconds, so go ahead and post. Yeah, the, due to the previous ones, I'm still banned. Oh, I'm posting from posting. All weeks. right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll do it again. I'll I'll, I'll I'll do it in, after sixty seconds. I'll give you uh, another permit. Or you can just post the link that I put in the uh, connect chat. And Pixelati, you're very, very welcome. Yeah, and great suggestion to have Michael come on board. Yes. We need more Michael in our lives. <laughs> I'm not sure if I could deal with that. Oh, you need less of yourself. <laughs> yeah. All right, so. Um, so. So if, if everybody out what is plenty to manage. Right. If everybody out there doesn't know who Cat is, Cat is one of the artists who worked on the Kat. on the new Battlestar Galactica series. And he'll he'll share more about that as well. So take it away, well buddy. Oh well I'm just um I'm actually uh, working on something here. This is kind of relevant to um, what Michael was talking about, and it's obviously um, gonna be warm up for uh, his presentation on the ninth, I guess, um, you're gonna be doing. But uh, this uh, project here is based off of this. Um, let's go to the main view. Um, for those of you who don't know, I sometimes dabble in writing science fiction. And uh, I wrote a short film um, called The Exchange, which deals with a uh, cryptographic, uh, like encoded um, narcotic that um, is uh, generated from um, a uh, source and then is keyed to the user at the end. And um, the uh, key process takes place in flight using drones and um, the uh, narcotic is a combination of um, uh, emotional um, uh, states that are captured by um, alpha and beta brainwave activity uh, that's scanned through you know kind of modified cell phones um, takes place in the year 2023 uh, and um, the uh, subject all deals with um, uh, the concept of the exchange, and the exchange is basically the cryptographic or the cryptocurrency um, system that uh, makes all this possible. So it's kind of like a Silk Road for um, a digital form of uh, adrenochrome, so a synthetic form of adrenochrome, which is uh, a chemical that's in your brain that uh, you need to live, but isn't really all that uh, uh, no, active or anything. It's just it's science fiction. And, uh, the point being is that. Um, we went and uh, shot um, a pair of brothers that I've uh, kind of teamed up with to do this. Um, they are twins, so they're extremely difficult to tell themselves apart. So uh, let's uh, just play this preview. Um, and 
this shot, um, right off the top, it's a little bit long here, but we'll get into it in a second. This was shot just basically using a scarlet, a red scarlet, which is um, one of the red cameras that came out before the uh, dragons and the uh, weapons. Um, very nice camera. So, there's me in my acting debut. <laughs> this is shot in my parkade. Just brilliant because uh, the whole thing is actually written to take place in my building, so we didn't have to go anywhere. We could do it with full gorilla shoot. Okay, so we grab this girl, and the drone comes in. All right, so it's going to come in for a landing, and we basically uh, hook her up to a little cell phone, and it transfers to um, uh, her uh, emotional state to a, um, a liquid that is then put into the drone, and then it keys to the user's cryptographic uh, signature at the end, and that's basically the shot, and then it delivers, and then the, um, the user inhales that, and it's basically um, laced with um, uh, epinephrine, but the uh, secret as to how it um, works is the uh, chemical just basically activates your brain a little bit, and then it plays back the emotional state of um, the host or the original source of the material, and that's um, what gets you whacked out. So the um, concept is um, uh, pretty interesting. The script is 30 pages long. I'm trying to extend it into a full um, uh, pilot length, uh, so I got to get it up to about 42 pages or 45 pages, um, and we'll see if we can uh, get it onto um, any of the streaming services. But anyway, the entire point of this is is that this was intended to be a visual effects test. So when we shot this, um, we shot this at 4K. So this was 4096 by 1708, and uh, frame D actually would have been uh, very helpful for me because. The amount of material that this is in memory is quite significant, and the uh, preview just to make this probably takes about 15 to 20 minutes just to generate, and that's just in the screen space that Layout is working in. My monitor's um, 1920 by 1080 um, uh, LG for the uh, television. Uh, so um, being able to uh, pull those kinds of um, uh, plates in to Lightwave and have them play back at a little bit of a better state it would be you know, quite awesome. Anyway, um, I had a lot of problems with this model. Um, I had to go in and I had to modify some stuff. And there's some seams that are visible, some of the stuff that work out for smoothing. But uh, that's what you get when you spend 40 bucks on CG Trader. So, you know, no big deal. But anyway, it's, um, this is a modified Mavic uh, Pro uh, that I've uh, kind of taken apart and slightly kit bashed. Obviously, these things um, are not the uh, rotors that are normally on here. But uh, this thing is also big. This thing's about a meter and a half across in the shot. And um, the uh, full renders went out to um, Smedge and uh, took uh, quite a while to cook. But um, ultimately, the results are uh, pretty nice. I did have some uh, issues with um, one of the um, uh, surfaces in here, which is the uh, dielectric material on these um, lights. And I was just about to do another comp. This is actually being turned into a tutorial right now. I'm actually in the middle of recording this tutorial. <clears throat> and I was going to use this um, with the ESR Trader and uh, the Cryptomat stuff, but uh, I just have to get this shot out the door. So it's, um, I'm going to leave that to Michael on the 9th to demonstrate in full. But uh, we can see here um, the different passes that I've so far assembled. Uh, this particular pass is the environment pass. So let's take a quick gander at some of these renders. So. Here's the different uh, bits for this. Hopefully, Fusion has not crashed during all of that, which it probably has. So I'm going to just restart Fusion here. Uh, has anybody noticed that Fusion has kind of you know, been very flaky lately, or at least for last eight months? So will will Cat will After Effects do any of this that Fusion will will uh, accomplish? Um, yes, but the thing is, is that. Um, uh, I don't know if um, you're going to be able to do uh, Cryptomat compositing with After Effects just yet. Um, that's a okay. Michael Wolf question. But uh, sure, you can... it's, a beta, it's a beta plugin for After Effects as well. Nice. So there you go. All right. So, yeah. um, but uh, um, Fusion will do this um, pretty much straightforward. Want it? So let's go. Here's slot five. Do you oh, find yourself look. using Fusion a lot more than After Effects? I never use After Effects. I hate After Effects. Okay. So it's a personal choice. 
Um, it's a professional choice. Um, I find After Effects to be too slow. I find it to be too cumbersome. And um, uh, you've got to remember that I used After Effects for 10 years as well. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of After Effects. I do not like it. Um, uh, it's got its place. It's got its uh, purpose. But for this type of compositing work, um, I absolutely cannot stand After Effects. It's okay. Just, it's, it's just too freaking slow. I mean, I think I think it will be nice for you to do a presentation like on one of the user group, one of the meetings, where you actually show people why you use Fusion over After Effects, so that everybody becomes clear as to why you use one over another, when to use it, and when not to use it. Um, basically, the biggest reason why I use um, Fusion is because of the interface. Uh, this is another reason why I use LightWave. I don't like you know people talking about, oh, let's you know, screw with the LightWave interface. Let's you know, screw. Let's make it look more icony. I, I don't want icons. Like I can tolerate this because this is simple, mm -hmm. right? And these mean something based off of words. This isn't like you know some screwy little two balls with a little stretchy symbol in between. It's like, no, we're not doing that. Um, all this stuff makes sense to me because this all translates into some kind of English. Right. Um, and you know, granted, uh, the localization for uh, Lightwave has been improved um, over the years. This is a very straightforward translation from Lightwave to Fusion because everything that's in here makes sense, and I've got absolutely everything in front of me. If I right click, I've got all of my tools here, and they're all in English. I don't have to translate icons. I don't need to have um, a degree in hieroglyphics to translate any of this stuff. And the reason why I like um, Fusion for doing this is that everything's pretty much up front. I don't have to drill into anything to get to it. Um, if I want to use groups, I can use groups. If I want to do that sort of thing, I can. But um, you know, nodal based compositing is something that isn't new. It's been around since the late '80s, and you know, some of the first nodal based compositors were Fusion in house when it was uh, developed at um, uh, Animal Logic, um, which is where it originally came from. And then, of course, um, uh, the Flame and Flint systems; uh, those are all originally uh, nodal compositing. Um, and uh, to a degree, there's uh, you know combustion, which kind of came out of the Flame and Flint, um, uh, you know tree of evolution there but of course combustion's gone and toast uh, and combustion was operators versus uh, nodes um, but uh, the, the point of being able to you know work in fusion is that all this stuff changes whenever I click on it I don't have to you know go and get a menu for it it's all there and it's a very straightforward timeline a lot of this stuff feels very similar to lightwave um, another thing that I wish that uh, lightwave had that uh, fusion has is the beautiful ability to change stuff like this so I can zoom and do you know a tightened up tight timeline really quickly and focus on a specific area or something this is something that I would really love for lightweight to have implemented um, but it's uh, it's not on its timeline not on a slider but uh, you know that's uh, something that you can do manually uh, by changing the um, final frames that you want hmm. for your end frame versus your beginning frame go <clears throat> go ahead Mike my reason not to use the After Effects is quite simple. Nested comps. That too. Nested not, nested comps? Comps. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can just see everything at a glance. Okay. I can see everything that's going on here. This is a very straightforward flow. It may look like a lot of tools, and yes, it's a lot of individual nodes, but I can very simply isolate any of this and comp and work you know, on that individually as I want. And I don't have to dig through multiple layers like Photoshop. Like, you know, After Effects is very powerful. If they would get away from that um, layers system, it would be so much more beautiful to work with and probably be a heck of a lot faster to work with. But um, they're doing some very scary stuff in the background to process all those layers together. Okay. Um, that's part of the reason why it's slow. That's why they have to throw. Um, uh, 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 GPU processing at it, um, you know, a bunch of other things that uh, you know, really um, you shouldn't need to do for compositing. Um, CPU stuff is pretty handy um, getting through there. But you know, if I want, I can go to timeline. You know, I've got layers here, so to speak, if you want. Um, and I've got my splines for anything that's in here that's got splines on it, which I don't have right now. But uh, the, the the beauty of this is that I can very quickly rearrange stuff, and I can rearrange stuff that's um, in a cluster like this and merge and move it um, to somewhere else. Like I can break this off and uh, transfer this whole thing very and, quickly. And the, beauty, and the beauty is Fusion is free. Well, yes, and, Fusion, and it's free up to the 4K uh, resolution. You don't get plugins, but um, 
I rarely use plugins with the exception of the Crocodile um, plugin suite and maybe one or two others. Um, Fusion's kind of um, uh, one of those packages where it's got pretty much everything in it that you would ever need as a compositor. And that's it. And you know anything else that's after that is, oh, well, you need that because you want to stylize your video or something like that. And granted, um, one of the things that I miss about um, earlier versions of Lightwave up to literally 5.6 was the use of um, Photoshop filters and After Effects plugins um, as post-processing filters. But, you know, these days it doesn't really matter. But um, getting back to just the idea of being able to merge stuff in a different spot, um, I can just take another merge tool here, bang, and go poof, and poof, and that's it. And I can just delete this tool, and now it's merged in a different spot. That's it. Um, I don't need to, you know, really screw around much with this one. Actually, I can just pop it right there. Bye. Wow, oh, very nice. Still there. So, um, you know, and you can see just how quickly it ran through all of that. You know, I can add the other stuff that's in here, and it's just composited uh, these five different layers, and bang, it's there. Um, I can throw this in. Uh, these are just TGA files. I was doing a slap comp. I'm demonstrating in this uh, video how uh, you can use a slap comp to very quickly assemble uh, a shot. And this is something that I actually haven't shown before in any of my tutorials, so um, this is something you're going to want to check out. I'll probably have this later on today. But the um, uh, Oh, by the way, we do have a sale on right now at Liberty3D, so uh, go there and use the back-to-school sale coupon. The coupon is called BTSS. 2018, so that'll give you 25% off all of your nifty purchases, including most bundles. So uh, go and enjoy that. The um, other thing that we got going on right now is we are doing the Deep Rising Effects group buy-in. Are you aware of this? No. Anybody? No. Okay. So um, Mambo, uh, the developer of Deep Rising Effects and uh, Coretta, um, has uh, agreed to do a very similar um, group buy-in program that we've done for Turbulence FD and for Live of CAD recently, which was very successful. We did um, uh, almost a maximum discount amount numbers for Live of CAD. Um, people got almost 50% off on that one. Um, so we're already uh, significant numbers into the count for the group buy-in for uh, Deep Rising Effects, so that discount is already starting to get pretty steep. So if you want Ian, you have to tell me, you have to email support at liberty3d.com, give me your Lightweight product lock ID, no crack numbers please, had somebody from Chile try to do that recently, that was a big, big drag for them, well they spent $200 on stuff and we don't refund, so you know, sorry, but if you give us a crack product ID, uh, we can't refund you, um, it's, and we'll give you store credit, but uh, we can't refund you for um, anything that comes to the store. Uh, unless you feel actually purchase something already of itself, and usually what we'll do is go, well, what did you want to purchase instead? But um, people that use crack numbers are bad, 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 <clears throat> bad, bad. So please don't do it. The um, uh, the stuff that relates here, kind of what Michael was talking about uh, earlier, though, is um, uh, in Lightweave we had the background plate here, which is pretty you know massive. Uh, in Fusion, Fusion is designed obviously to play back 2D stuff, uh, and it has the ability to cache, obviously. But um, uh, even Fusion has um, uh, fun caching heavy material. So let's go to DaVinci Resolve. Oh, uh, yeah, there's the exchange, there's the footage. Uh, we'll go to the test shoot, and we'll actually load the red 3D, R3D image. All right. Let's talk French for a moment, for all our French viewers. All right, okay. And you can see here that even Fusion has some difficulties caching this. This is coming off of an SSD, but this is coming in at 4K resolution. So in Fusion, if I want to you know, change this, I can change the proxy options. So you just change the proxy options here. So you go one eighth for auto proxy, or if I want force speed proxy, it speeds up and go one eighth. You can see that the playback changes significantly. So depending on, I'll turn the motion blur off. Let's go one fifteenth. I can actually get up to 16, 18, almost at 30 frames per second, or 24 frames per second, let's go 16. 22, well, 23. <clears throat> but you can see how chunky that video comes out. Because it's literally only, you know, 
looking for every 16th pixel in the image and throwing that to the screen. But you can see that my memory, because I only have um, 32 gigs of RAM, I have one fourth of the RAM of Michael's machine. I wouldn't have been able to tell that the actor was you in that scene if you didn't tell me. Well, that's me. It's the fake mustache that gives it away. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was going off the of Superman. I decided to do this short little movie. So, anyway, the point being is that um, uh, memory management um, in um, both Lightwave and Infusion is dealt with differently because obviously it's doing different stuff. Um, images obviously are huge in terms of memory. A 3D object is nothing compared to the size that an image is. Uh, it's very rare that I get a 3D object that's over, you know, 20 megabytes, usually, uh, maybe 30, 40 megabytes on something bigger. Um, so having a, you know, a better system for being able to deal with images in sequences and being able to play them back in real time or near real time or as quickly as freaking possible depending on uh, what the resolution is, um, it's very important because it gives you the ability to more um, realistically interact with this stuff. So uh, let's just go down to the wire here. We'll throw a merge in here. Actually, we'll throw a resize tool in here. Because this will resize it up. We'll see how crummy this looks. Because I've got that proxy set. And obviously I don't want to work with a proxy that's looking like this. But um, we can see that uh, the drone gets in there. And even going through all of that. Fusion's crunched through all those different images. And there it is. It's displayed it. So let's um, turn the proxy back down to, let's say, one fourth. And you can see just how much quicker it can process that. So, you know, if I'm working on something that's really heavy, um, yeah, I'll work with something like this. And um, that's uh, uh, one of the ways to get around dealing with super heavy scenes. Now, um, we saw a little bit of ghosting there. And the reason for that is because one of these plates um, in here has uh, uh, the footage from the background in it. And I don't think I wiped it out properly, so let's see what we've got here. Uh, oh, yeah, that might be why. Alpha game, thank you. Yay! And poof. There you go. So, this is um, going to be a tutorial. That this should actually be out today. Um, and I did learn quite a bit about uh, a couple of things with the uh, new render. The dielectric material is... Um, uh, quite interesting in how it um, produces some of the uh, uh, specular hits that we're getting. A lot of people are you know, complaining about uh, specular hits um, on their surfaces um, coming from lighting in their scene. And it's uh, almost always uh, in anything that I've uh, done tests with, uh, the worst problematic spot for it is in the um, uh, specular indirect buffer. So I'm going to actually go and see if I can find the specular indirect buffer here for I know which pass it's in, hold on. It is in the, uh, no, not in the GI. It is in the backlight. It is over here. So here's the headlight. So here's the speculative direct buffer. And here is clear coat. And here is speculative indirect. All right. So, and you can see this result um, uh, it's coming on, uh, coming across as little micro glints, and you can see where it starts to be a problem. Well, it would be easier if I turn the up off. Um, and I had to throw a huge amount of um, uh, refractive sampling and reflection sampling uh, samples, and you can see them popping on and off here. So let's put it back. Can you see them? But 
this is you know, part of what's actually in in the shot. Like this is it's it's light interacting off of the material, and there's these uh, little blue um, LED panel things on the side of the drone. Um, but the uh, every once in a while, it hit a, a glancing angle. I guess it's one of the rays, just basically saying, "Hey, I um, I need to be here," so it pops on and off. So I've been uh, working with the comp to. Uh, correct that uh, using a couple of different tools to just manage it. Um, defocus tool, which helps, and um, just a brightness contrast tool to, to deal with it a little bit. And uh, I think what I'm going to probably do is throw a keyer in here so that anything that's blue will get blown away and uh, it won't show up in that layer. But um, uh, this is literally just in the specular indirect buffer. It's not in the specular buffer. So I went through all the buffers in VPR to look at that and uh, to check it out. And one of the cool parts about EXR Trader, uh, which is obviously Michael's uh, tool, is that um, uh, it gives you access to light waves settings for the noise reduction tool. So uh, let's go to EXR Trader. All right, and this is the old version of EXR Trader, sorry, Mike. All right, so um, let's go to um, the extra buffer, and it, down here in Speculate Indirect, um, you go down to the Light Wave Options, you've got Adaptive Noise Sampling, or Adaptive Sampling, and then Noise Sampling, and you can pick your construction filter. So you have direct access through this inside of EXR Trader. You don't have to go over to uh, Light Wave's properties um, for rendering, and then go to the buffers and pick this stuff out. Um, you can do it directly, and so quite nifty that you can get access to that right there. Um, is, uh, the least, the less damage that you're doing to your image, the better, uh, in my opinion. Um, I, uh, noise reduction is great, but noise reduction is a artifact in itself, in my opinion. So, um, you know, if there's ways that you can get uh, around in comp, then um, go go and do it. And uh, you know, I'm doing pretty much everything that I possibly can to get rid of it, but it's uh, uh, it's really coming about because of the surface in here. Dealing with these lights. So if my computer starts to skip here for audio, it's because I'm engaging VPR. Go we'll look at the spec of the indirect buffer. So you can see it, it's very prominent here. It does clean up, but um, this is one of the things where it's like everybody was kind of you know, really concerned about this in stills and you can get away with um, you know, throwing more samples at it um, to get rid of it in a still, but in animation this stuff pops up more often and there's um, no combination of settings that I've been able to achieve that gets rid of this while still keeping my renders reasonable. So um, the purpose of having a multi-pass composite uh, in, in my scenario was to basically use one from a pass that was good and then ditch the one that was bad. So over here in comp, I can use the one that worked and then ditch the one that wasn't. So uh, if this one's going to be problematic, it's going to be you know an evil, evil horror show, then I can ditch it and or blur it and then compensate for it with another one from another pass because it's not in every single one. It's just in the one where I had... Um, the uh, ray trace refraction on for that particular pass, so I can eliminate it elsewhere. And um, in this particular pass here, I've managed to crush it down. Let me turn the proxy off here. Can you proxy it up for? Okay. And I can defocus this. You can see it? And just over top, these things merge in. And it actually still comes together properly without screwing it up. So just by able to um, uh, change some of the uh, layers with a, a blur tool on, it doesn't destroy the final render because I've got enough from other passes to kind of compensate for um, whatever I've kind of mucked or stepped on uh, heavily. So I'm going to just pop another uh, merge tool in here. And I'll go with this. Meow. 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 
and you can't tell that I've blurred that out. So where's the one that I blur? Okay, so it's this one I blur out. This is kind of hard to tell when you're working with it up against black, but you can see the original. Okay, and this has got the problems in it. All right, I've got the blur tool on it. Brightness contrast tool. I'll just bump this up so you can see how blurry it is. And once you get in with everything else, it kind of works out okay. So it's not an issue. And you can deal with it in comp. Um, it may look a little bit funky at some point, but uh, depending on how you deal with it and you mix in additional layers that are sharp, it'll work. So I don't necessarily have to have it blended in that much. I'll just pull it back a little bit. Because I get some of this later on in other passes. So um, it's just compensating nicely for where I need to. So, um, uh, and the, um, the whole purpose of this VFX test was to get this uh, drone kind of in and working. Because um, this drone is going to be uh, kind of reworked slightly for the actual um, show the um, uh, the script calls for it, I think, uh, seven or nine times. So, let's see, here's the exchange. So, oh, wait, oh, that's the wrong version. Yes, cute. Smith. So, this is final draft. This is what I do my screen writing in. So, oh, oh. Um, I don't think I have my script report in here just yet, but um, uh, it find drone. So if I mix, boom, 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 boom. So there's VFX, 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 VFX. So there's four shots there. Another six or seven. It, it's probably in the show about twelve times. But anyway, the um, uh, the point of it is is that um, we can work all this stuff out, and the um, uh, shots will pretty much all be uh, ready to go for me to um, start working on before we actually go and shoot. Uh, with the exception of the ones where um, uh, people have to interact with it, because I, I wrote the entire thing to take place inside of my building and on the rooftop of the pool, uh, where the buyers actually you know hanging out with a couple of hot tub hotties, and. Um, uh, doing copious amounts of uh, cocaine and other narcotics. So um, the uh, and there you have well, it. It's, like, it's a high end <laughs> drug. It's, it costs uh, ten thousand TXE to buy. So this is a way and, better drug than the other stuff, right? <laughs> it, um, in, in the story, okay. In the story, it's um, a combination of like the the effects of it would be a combination of um, a high end opioid, um, MDMA, and LSD. Ooh. <laughs> So I got your interest over there. You're from California. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, point being is that this is a live action show. This is uh, something that we can um, bite off and chew. This isn't stasis, um, although it will be returning to stasis at some point. But the um, uh, goal is, is that all of this can be done with tools that I have access to. I don't need anything special. I uh, went and did the track in uh, Synthize in probably about 25 minutes. It's no big deal. Tracked actually very well. And uh, the rest of the drone tracking shots will be uh, done probably using synthize although fusion has its own built-in tracker um i just ordered actually some um little uh, tracking led uh lights they're actually not for that purpose but um, on wish if you want uh if you want to do some uh, really solid tracking but you're gonna have to paint them out because they glow um you can order led packs that have a remote control um so you can get i think 12 in a pack and they have different colors um, and they're all completely controllable, and you can put them on a, a green screen, or you can put them out on a, um, a surface, or in a shot where you don't have a lot of good tracking markers, or in a dark area uh, where you need tracking markers. And you can light these things up, and you can turn them off uh, at will. And um, and the brightness and, and the brightness doesn't interfere with your subject that much. Yeah, well, you, they're dimmable. That's the thing. And nice. I, think, I think these ones that I ordered are dimmable. But I, literally, I, I spent four dollars on the for a pack of twelve. Oh, that's um, great! Off of wish because they're getting shipped from Zhengzhou, Zhengzhou, China. Cool. Maybe, maybe, maybe you can put in the link here in Adobe Connect on that. 
I can... Um, well, Wish is, uh, Wish is totally app-based, so you can... You oh, have to okay, that Wish.com. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. I know yeah. what that is. All yeah. right. Yeah, so... Um, but, yeah, you can find it. But the, the idea there being is that you can uh, plug them into the tracker and uh, away you go. Um, believe it or not, this shot, uh, there wasn't much for the Fusion tracker to catch on to. Um, so it really had some major problems um, giving me a stable track. Um, you know, I wasn't thinking it was going to be so difficult. I thought there was going to be enough stuff in the roof. Um, going back to the beginning of the shot, you would pick up on this stuff here. But Synthize had a way better time of doing this. Like it was like literally minutes. I got I got a stable, uh, solid track. I think my second or third try in. So. And just just a shout out to John Carroll on Adobe Connect. I'm gonna I'm gonna connect you in as a presenter now. Um, that's gonna allow you to use your microphone. And uh, when and then we'll we'll so just hang tight there. We'll get back to you. So. Uh, anyway, um, if anybody wants to know more about the exchange, they can uh, email me. I'm actually hoping to turn this into a lightwave show. If it goes, um, it is designed to be a series. Um, the characters, uh, the character development is actually very good. Um, this is some of my best writing to date. Um, and uh, actually, uh, this character, this main lead character, I'd like to write for the female lead characters. Um, this, the backstory for this character is actually quite interesting. Um, so if anybody wants to check this out, um, they can. Um, but uh, <clears throat> it's, uh, uh, it's it's quite interesting. And there's um, a pair of sisters that are in this. Um, actually, this little girl that's in here. I don't know if she's going to get the lead. Uh, she's going to get the, the, the spot for this. I don't want to break her heart, but at the same time, um, we have to push her a little bit to get her to actually fight us so it looks real on camera. Uh, but then again, you know, she came out in the middle of the night basically to do this for free, so um, you know, can't knock her. Uh, but uh, uh, she's also a little young. The, 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 the drug is designed to work best off of uh, younger subjects, so um, children who are you know, just uh, exiting puberty are the best people to use as sample material. That's the concept. Um, and the uh, whole reason why this stuff costs so much is because generally the subject uh, needs to be um, fearful of their lives to the point of actually being killed. And usually that happens because this stuff is so illegal that they don't have any witnesses. So, um, uh, she gave me a good boot to the head. I don't know if you saw that. Did you see that part? I have to maximize it. Hold on. Let's see if uh, I can find the frame where she gives me a kick in the face. <laughs> uh, so are you, are you on the left or the right? I'm on the right. Okay. This is Mario. This is uh, Mario Payne. Um, he's uh, going to be the... Uh, uh, one of the producers on the show um, with myself and um, his brother Gino uh, who is actually a camera operator in Game of Thrones and a few other shows uh, have, they are based mostly out of Atlanta and Atlanta is exploding for film production work so let's see if we can turn the proxy back on here yeah she gives me a good boot so boot Wait, 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 I'm hoping that uh, in the next uh, little um, segment, though, that uh, I get involved with this, that I can make use of the Cryptomat um, uh, methods for compositing with Fusion using EXR Trader from Lightwave, because uh, that will certainly help out in a lot of places. Mike, you're probably thinking, well, geez, this could help you somewhere. Oh, it could help everybody. Yeah, but in this specific instance, where would uh, I take advantage of Cryptomat compositing? Um, not quite sure. Um, how, how many passes did you render for this? Um, I rendered. Uh, no, go and see. There's um, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six. This is headlights volume. That's seven. There's the overheads. It's eight. Um, is any place where you actually try to isolate something by object or by item, or by surface? 
Oh yeah, um, I would like to be able to isolate uh, stuff by um, specific surfaces. Uh, like I use that surface. That certainly would help. Yeah, so yeah, that would definitely help for sure. Let's get over to the map for free. That's really yeah, cool, excellent, awesome, awesome. So yeah, I'd be very brilliant. Um, and uh, uh, that'll be an integral uh, part of um, the composing workflow. Uh, not a lot of people know this, but um, when Mike introduced uh, EXR Trader, um, Galactica was the first show ever to use it in television production. And I caught a lot of flack for it, <laughs> but it worked out in the end. Um, everything, everything came on the wash. Um, but uh, EXR Trader is what saved us um, a huge, massive amount of time in uh, production um, because of the uh, benefits gave us to give us access to buffers that normally we would be running out passes for uh, just because that's the way Gary liked to work so um, I had to change his brain a little bit to make that work and that caused a lot of friction but in the end he was like okay fine well, it works um, unfortunately we had a evil compositor who kind of um, stabbed me in the back here and, uh, <laughs> oh <things>. no <laughs> yeah well, that's a whole story man um, you know, let's, uh, that person um, needs to bring hell, but uh, oh. that's uh, just how it is. Anyway, the um, uh, point of all this is that uh, this tutorial will be out um, probably later on today or first thing tomorrow, and of course we've got that sale going on, and if you want in the group buy for Deep Rising Effects, um, you need to get in there and um, you know, check it out, so um, what we're talking about here is deepeffectsworld.com uh, We're talking about this, this is Deep Rising Effects plugin. Now, right now, the list price is two hundred forty-nine dollars. So, with the discounts that are being applied with each additional person that joins on, this price goes down. Like this price is now uh, below two hundred bucks already. So, get in. Nice. Send me the email, and you get access to the most evolved solution for fluid. Computational fluid dynamics. Really? So this is one of the best fluid dynamic uh, programs on the market, in your opinion? Um, well, it's the only one for Lightwave that does all this stuff. Nice. Now, this I've is what I need. Flip fluids and all that kind of jazz. Well, you know, I don't want to open a fucking blender. All right. So then, um, what do we do? We go here. We register. No, you you send me a, an email to support at liberty3d.com. All right. You give me your Lightwave product lock ID. No crack numbers. You give me your first and last name and say, I'm in. And you understand that whether or not there's a discount, you're going to buy this on the day that it closes. The closeout date is August 31st at midnight. And I will be requesting payments from everybody who participates that day, September 1st, through till the end of the day or until everybody pays up. And then I'll be making the group buy purchase from Deep Effects, which is Mambo. There's a new developer has popped onto the scene recently in the last two years for Lightweight, which is great because we need more developers, not less. Um, thank you very much, RP. Uh, and uh, Oops. Uh, you know, it's good to see uh, support for this. And maybe you know, at some point in time, we'll do one of these for Michael. All right, I, I'm, I'm putting yeah, I'm, I'm putting the, right. the email address yeah. for Cat here, um, and I think I misspelled it. I'm going to put it in again as support. Support at Liberty Three. At Liberty, I, I, Liberty. I put too many E's in there. Okay, at Liberty Three D dot com. Yeah. Um, there we go. So I put that into the chat box, everybody. So it's on there, and you're gonna email him your your lock ID for your Lightwave yeah. um, program. So that means Mandala. Um, this might be something you want to get in on. Yeah, I uh, think um, pretty much everybody uh, who wants to get um, uh, Dan, come up. Yeah, Dan's in. Um, there are a number of other people that are in. Uh, I know that uh, Grace Rebold is in. Um, there's actually uh, Mark Ross is in. There's a bunch of people that are in, um, but we need as many as we possibly can. So, um, oh yes, uh, yeah. By all, by all means, jump in. Okay, so then cat and share it because the more people that join in, the bigger the discount. Um, it does have a cap because you know obviously you can't be given away for nothing, but um, that cap is achievable. Um, and I can't say the exact numbers, but we're we're almost halfway there to that cap. Okay, okay? so what's and the? I've, I've only started on. Friday night. So if we if we cap it off, what was so what are we paying per person? Um, well, the the maximum discount um, uh, is fifty percent. So that would be what total in in dollars? I think well, well it's fifty percent of forty nine. 
So of, of 249, you said? Oh, okay, 49. so we're talking about, like, yeah, 175 or so. All no, right, no, so... No, it's less than that. It's less than that? Okay, so, Cap, this is what I need, and and I think it's important you, you let... So I didn't know anything fifty. about this until today. Yeah, so it's... It, okay, now, and now, keep in mind, I charge a fee to do this because there's a substantial risk when I go and do this because it's my freaking credit card um, that has to do this. Uh, so it won't actually ever get to this price, all right? It's, right. It's, Gonna have a little bit tacked on because one PayPal charges transaction fees on the stuff coming in. Right. Okay. So I have to cover that, um, and then the um, fees going out to my card um, are also part of that fee. Like I don't make money off of this. Right. I do it because the community needs this. Right. Um, like occasionally, if if we hit the, the maximum amount of people and we go beyond that, then yes, we'll make money off of it. But it's not something that we do as like a profiteering type thing. All right. It's, um, yeah. So, um, and uh, I got to tell you, the, the Lightwave Cab one was like we just needed one more person for the maximum cap. Okay, so and for for the Lightwave like, Cat for the for the Cat as well. Well, Lightwave Cat that one's closed. That one's closed. Damn. Oh, so I would have. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Well, I would have jumped on the Lightwave Cat because I really do want that program. I didn't know about this stuff. So if you send me promos um, that I can copy and paste and send to the mailing list, I will do that in mm -hmm. a heartbeat. So okay. when you, so so whenever you get these deals, I must be included on there. You no, know, get so I, and I'll send it out to the, in, the entire membership list as well as to sure. the yeah. Facebook uh, um, um, groups and all of that. All right, so, so yeah. Just really quickly, I'm going to um, uh, paste uh, the character bio for Roach into the window here. So if anybody wants to read that, they can. So this is a. Uh, so Liberty, let's see. Dana Kenobi has a question. He says, "Does the does the um, the XR Trader work? Um, EXR Trader work and and set up the same in 2018 as it did in 2015?" Yes. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing. Yeah. Okay. I so mean, it, yes. it, had, it had to be the code had to be changed, and that's why we're actually charging for the upgrade to XR Trader 2018. But um, it works the same way. Right, yeah. and there, there's access to the you know uh, the noise reduction filter and all that kind of stuff. So there's a little bit more in there than just you know straight port. All right, yeah, and, and, and your custom AOVs like that. Yeah, and to Draven forty four, thank you for following everybody. Make sure you follow this page so that you're notified automatically by Twitch of our streams that we're doing here. So everybody, make sure you follow me. Okay, so who's next? Because I'm tired of talking. Who's next? Tired to talk? Okay, let's go check it out. Oh, Who is on? We had a gentleman on. Um, there he is, Joe. 80, 80 no, John. John Carroll, are you there? Go ahead and use your microphone. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, great! Fantastic, fantastic. So then, um, Cat, if you would stop sharing your screen. Yep. Right, and then John, would you, you, John, you, back to connect. John, you're going to see a little Ooh. button in front of your Adobe Connect, or right in the middle of your Adobe Connect screen that says share my screen. Just push that when that comes up. This isn't the, this isn't the machine I should be sharing from, really. Well, oh, whichever, okay. well gotta, whichever one you're on is... how this was set up. Otherwise, well, I would have been on my other machine. Well, so. John, try it. See what happens. Let's, don't panic yet. <laughs> it, Give seriously, it a try. this is the wrong machine for me to share from. Do you want to switch to another machine? Everything's installed on everything's installed on my other machine. So all right, so I tell you what, let's do this. It's break time anyway. Amazing, amazing that Yay. is. So fifteen minute break. Um, John, get set up and um, let me um, go to the fifteen minute timer. And thank you, John, for being here. Thank you, Cat. Thank you, Michael. Um, this is great. And let's click on that, leave the page. All right, so um, let's um, let me stop this real, real quick. So, so hopefully this has been helpful for everyone. Um, we're gonna, now, we're going to be ending about 12, 15, because I want to do the Adobe Creative Cloud giveaway. So whenever we have these meetings, I, I, I do a giveaway. I'm, I'm allowed to give away a one-year subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud. That means mm -hmm. you get everything, everybody, that Adobe owns. Photoshop, After Effects, Premiere Pro, all those, all the programs. So whoever wins will, will get that. And um, that's after meeting. But we'll, we'll do that about 12.15. So I have to go to a, um, and I, we're, we're, we're ending, we normally end at 1 o'clock. But um, I have to go to the, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the Adobe, the, um, the, the San Diego Comic Fest 
a board and they have a meeting today. So I'll, I have to go to San Diego for that. I need 30 minutes to do so. So other than that, we normally end at one o'clock. All right. Okay. So let's uh, hit the timer. Bang. All right. And then John, go ahead and get set up. Come on back and, um, and we will uh, get you on board. Stephan, that link is there for you for the group buying information ah, in the um, Adobe Connect window. Okay, good. Let me go to connect real quick. Uh, there we go. There we go. All right, there we go. That's it there. And I'm going to come over here and put that right into the Twitch box. Okay, there we go. All right. right. Very, very, very good. All right, let me bring back the... Uh, Timer. Timer. Okay, let's take a break, bathroom break, lunch break, whatever you guys want to do, we'll come back and then we will um, have on. some more fun. Great. Give me a Bye bye. All right. And cat, stick around. Let's see if he's stuck around. Okay, yeah, yeah, cat, stick around in case, in case we want to bring you back, so just to let you know.